is Cranking Wieners. Welcome back to Camp Claw. This is day number 30, 30, let's see if I can do math. This is day number 30, actually. There is so much I need to catch you guys up on. Uh, I've not been filming for the past couple of days, almost a week, because I've been so busy editing and trying to get everything at Camp Claw situated. I really screwed myself for last year. I left a big mess for last year, so so my future self could clean it up um, this summer. But we're really coming along swimmingly, and there's been a lot that's happened since I've last posted a video. Let's just start off with the most interesting thing that I happened to do, um, and that is I decided to get a musky hook stuck in my hand. It, it wasn't on the musky trip that I happened to get the uh, the hook stuck in my hand, but it was when I was working in the, in the barn. I was hanging up some lures just to make everything look nice. I was on this box, I tripped and I fell, and um, I, I basically was holding the muscular when I fell and it just got caught in my finger all the way through the barb. Luckily, Cole was there to help take it out. That was the first time he's ever taken a, uh, a hook out with the line trick. Here's the footage from that. We'll try to push right here as much as we can. And you're literally just gonna wanna like fuck hard. Harder than that. <laughs> Someone's gonna have to do it. Yeah, I mean, I'll try. I've just never done it before, so I don't know. It's no try, you gotta get it first time. <laughs> okay, you're gonna be pulling up. Like so, like at an angle like this. Yes. Get it kind of, yeah, a little bit less slack. I'm just gonna throw my shoulder, my arm at that tree. Yep, okay. ready? One, two, three, go. Nice job. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that made like that made like my heart kind of. I was confident. As long as you just went as hard as you did, that was perfect. Was Thank scared. you. Man. Appreciate it. Quite sketchy, but uh, it's a lot better than going to the hospital and spending money on you know unnecessary bills. Uh, what else did we do? Oh, also we finally sold the old 198 slow. It's a very it was a very sad day, but it's it's good that this boat is now going to a much more responsible angler. That being Becca, she came all the way from Rhode Island and drove up here to Camp Claw to pick this this uh, this vessel up. So it's no longer at camp. I'm a little bummed. There's a lot of great memories on that, but I know it's going to a good home and she's gonna make even better memories and catch even bigger fish on the old 198 Stinger. Um, also, while she was here, I decided to take her on a spin um, in the Can-Am and uh, it's completely totaled, completely destroyed. Take a look at this. <laughs> gonna tear me a new one for this but all I'm gonna say is these tools I swear to God are meant to break just take a look at this just take a look at this oh so we are missing what is that a ball joint a few other things I'm sure the actual oh wow look at that yeah it's just completely ripped off I really haven't even taken a look at this it's been kind of an ignorance bliss situation where if I don't look at it it's not real but yeah that was pretty screwy also messed up this panel which connects to my passenger side headlights Everything else is fine though, other than, you know, that right there. It really was a, a kind of an uneventful uh, scenario. I was just ripping them around on the trails in the, in the backwoods and I, I was swerving to not hit a rock, ironic, and I ended up hitting a tree and I really wasn't going that fast. It was going maybe like 20 miles an hour, but I must have hit it just right, just right to the point where it completely wrecked the Can-Am. I think it's salvageable. I don't know, you guys will probably let me know in the comments. I have a love-hate relationship with UTVs. I, I think they're awesome, they're so much fun, but I swear to God, they're built and meant to break and they cost as much as, like my foreigner, like you can literally spend $32,000 on one of these. This one in particular, I believe is, I, I purchased it for 17,000 to be completely honest. And I probably put another like, I don't know, two or three grand on accessories and maintenance. I love side-by-sides, but I also don't love them if you get what I mean. So I still need to get that. We've um, got a hook in our hand. We sold the low, 
and I destroyed a Can-Am. What else? You're probably asking, what else is new? On the more brighter side of things, take a look at this, check this out. Come out, Scooty! She's looking at the Can-Am. She's like, John, what did you do? Yeah, I don't know what I do half the time. Come on, Lucky! Oh, also, my dog doesn't listen to me anymore. Come on, Lucky! Come on, Lucky! Come on, Scoots! Come on, we're gonna go to the barn. Fast wiener, whoa! Go, 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 go! What? Go get him. <laughs> I should also mention, too, it's just, uh, it's just Lucky and I at camp. Uh, Kaylee has gone away, Zach and Cole left back for Texas, and Kyle left for San Diego. So we've got this whole 32 acres of Camp Claude to ourself. It's kind of great, just me and the pup. Okay, anyway, you've heard about some bad news. Uh, now let's talk about some good news. Finally, this is something I've been waiting for for ages. Voila, we finally have light in the barn. This took about a month. A month to accomplish, and I didn't do anything really. I just had to make a ton of calls and, and make a bunch of appointments, but we finally have electricity in the barn. You have no idea how huge this is, and this, this may seem like a small thing, and after this experience, I really take electricity for granted. I'd be working in this barn in complete darkness. I couldn't charge anything. I had to run um, all my extensions just to charge my boat to my pole that had the transformer on. It was quite inconvenient, but now let there be light. We have electricity. Also, two. Uh, the boat got some accessories. I'm probably gonna talk about that and save it for a different video, but this boat, this Lund, is now, in my opinion, completely 110% dialed, and I'm excited to show you guys what I've done to this boat um, to make it an absolute fishing machine. So I just figured I'd show you that. Electricity, that's huge. We also have the heaters installed. Look at that, there's one heater right there, and then there is another heater right there and if you come up here come follow me up here show you something else that's kind of cool we also have lights under this little port area too this is where i'd park most of my vehicles and my um my boats but up here oh, i gotta turn the light on <laughs> dummy we also got this which is very important especially for this time of year we have an ac unit this is a little uh, american standard mitsubishi AC unit, which is really, really huge in the summertime. This, this summer and past summers in Maine have been extremely hot, all the way up to the hundreds, which may not seem like much for you Southern folk, but up here in the Northeast, that is ridiculous. That's blistering heat. Let's see if I can turn it on. There we go. She's working. So dirty. Anyway, probably boring to you guys, but exciting for me. And when I find things exciting, I want to share it with you. Heating cooling and electricity in the barn. This thing is, um, if you can't get the hint yet, this is going to turn into basically a living space for any visitors that come and want to experience Camp Claw to the fullest. Let's turn these lights off. Bing, bing, bing. Cool. Okay, lastly, I think the last thing that I've done um, this trip that really wasn't a part of any videos, but that I did document some footage of is uh, we spent um, uh, a day on our own private island. This was an experience that I've wanted to do for many years now. There's this island called Nautilus Island. It's in the Penobscot Bay, and they just so happened to have like a couple days opening. So we went there, we visited. It's incredible. I've never done anything like this. It was kind of a vacation for us, and uh, it was fun. I mean, it's like literally the size of my property. It's like 32 acres, and it's surrounded by just, it's basically surrounded by the Atlantic Ocean. It's a weird feeling. We took the whaler, ripped it all the way from Bangor, Maine, to the destination, which is like 30 miles. Really awesome, magical experience. Uh, not to sound sentimental, but it was very cool. And that's something else that we did while I wasn't filming. Now that I've got you guys caught up and you know what's been going on in my life here up at camp, I think it's time to get into the meat and potatoes of today's video, and that is we are going to do a creek hopping mission. This is something that you've been requesting so much since I posted the first Camp Claw video, and I decided let's make it happen. We got very fishing conditions today. It's overcast, it might get a bit of rain, a little bit of wind. We're gonna hop in the Forerunner, head up north, and see if we can explore some new creeks and, and rivers to try to chase after some main fish. So stick with us, stay tuned, and let's go crank. Creek 11's on. We've just made it to the spot. Things are looking good. I mean, this is probably some of the fishier weather we've had since I've been up here in Maine. The river is just, boop, 
right over there. It's a river I've never fished before. I can't even pronounce the name. It's the Pis Pisquat Pisquatus Pisquali. I don't know. I'm not even gonna try. But it supposedly has a myriad of species. We could catch trout today, I think. We could catch small. We could catch fall fish. Fall fish apparently get pretty big, like two, three pounds here in Maine. One of the other cool things about today's video is Ketchco has sent me some lures to experiment with. What Ketchco sent me was literal micro size versions of the hard baits that we have. So this right here is the regular sized banger, which you guys obviously love. Now, this is the banger that I'm gonna be testing out today. Look how tiny this thing is. It's, it's microscopic almost. Here's a size comparison between the two bangers. Obviously, we've got the grande banger, the regular banger, and then the mini banger, but this one is small, small. They will be available on the site either mid to late June. Click the link down below or, or visit right here. You also have micro filthy frogs. Look how tiny this thing is. I, I, I love this. It's like, what is that thing called? Like tiny brands? We basically made our own tiny brands lure. In addition to that, we've got uh, some micro zingers too. We're gonna throw all these today, see if they work. Honestly, these are perfect lures and presentations for creek fishing missions. And if you guys grew up watching this channel, then you know that that is what I love to do. Let's not waste another moment. We've got one rod, a bag, a camera, and a river full of fish. So stick with us, stay tuned, and let's go get them. All right, let's do this. Got all my lures right here. Did bring some soft plastics with me today too, but the main objective is to test out these uh, micro, micro lures. We don't really have a name for these yet, actually, but I'm just gonna call them micro Guggen Squad cranks. This one is the Recon. It's supposed to dive two to four. We'll see how that works. This is my Creek Stick. It's a 610 Guggen Finesse Gold. I've got some 10 pound braid on here leadered up with some six pound fluorocarbon. I prefer using lighter line on these creek, creek missions only because these fish can be finicky and the water is generally clear in these in these main creeks. I'm starting off with the the, uh, the craw collar because a lot of these fish in here will eat craws and uh, little tiny little tiny insects, crustaceans, things like that. This is gonna be fun. This is literally the first time anyone has ever fished with these lures in general. So kind of a guinea pig at the moment. Definitely gonna get some ticks today, for sure. So sick. Haven't done one of these in a minute. I'm getting old too, I'm getting old and farty. Oh. Spot number one. It's kind of a deep pool with a waterfall. Looks pretty fishy, honestly. Drag is set, we got the Guggen crank all rigged up. Let's see if we can get bet. Oh, I'm on, I'm on, instantly. First cast, I'm on. It took no time at all. What do we have? Nice little smallmouth. <laughs> Confirmed. The Guggen micros work. They catch fish just about as big as them, but can't complain. Literally first cast, but then I got a smallmouth. That's so cool. Nice little smallie. Oh, stop that. These hooks are sharp. Mission success. Hopefully this is uh, the smallest one we get today, but we'll take it. Thank you. Be free, stinky. Big release. Yeah, let's try on there. Oh, yep, there we go. Another one. <laughs> little creek smallmouth. Oh, God. Cunning little dude. Tried to put me right on the rock. Look at the colors on him. He's beautiful. This is fun. These baits were designed for fishing scenarios like this. Catching crappie and bluegill. Oh, my God. Or if you're into micro smallmouth like myself, that's a perfect little bait for you, too. Another one. Pretty little dude. Thank you. See you later, stinky. I'm trying to find the mama. Mama small drop. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's got throttled. That felt like a good one. This thing's got a sweet little action. It's just like the, the regular recon. It just doesn't dive as deep, obviously. I'm gonna toss a little rattling net in there just to see if there's anything bigger right on the bottom. It's a pretty deep hole, so I don't know if this is getting all the way down there. Got some cracking juniors here we're gonna try. It's a really deep pool. I just wanna see what's lurking down there. I'm gonna go back and forth between soft plastics and the, and the micro cranks today. Even though creek fish can be kind of dumb, it can be pretty difficult to dial in what the bigger ones want. Even though this is a small pool we're fishing, I, I am certain there's probably some decent, you know, one to two pound smallmouth lurking, lurking below. We'll throw it right in that white water. Right where the bigs live. Oh, there's one I just got picked up. Dropped it. Oh, oh, little one. Oh, he had it. <laughs> wow, it is super deep. It's like at least five foot in that pool. Oh, I just got hit. Feels little. Oh, that actually didn't feel small. Oh, yeah, that feels good. There we go. Maybe a little bit better. Oh yeah, a little bit bigger, not by much, but definitely a nicer smallmouth. 
Just sitting on the bottom there. <laughs> That's cool. Woo, chill, Bubba, chill. Number three on the Junior Kraken. Thanks, dude. Appreciate it. Much love. Cool. All right. I feel like we've expended the spot. It wasn't something I anticipated fishing all day. So we're going to move on down the river a little bit so we can find some more productive water, maybe a few bigger pools. The bigger the pool, generally, the more fish it can hold, obviously, and then, you know, bigger fish as well. My goal today is catch, like, a nice one, you know. And I guess a nice one for main creeks is, like, two pounds. That's a pretty good fish. You catch a three pound of these creeks, that's pretty unreal. I don't think I've ever beat a three pound swan out of a creek. Maybe close, but not quite. Decent though, we got a few. That's all that matters. As long as we catch fish in every stop that we make, it's a uh, mission success. Meet you guys at spot number two. Well, it looks pretty good. It's right below a dam. Same river system, nothing's changed. It's more moving water. I just, whenever I'm fishing these creeks, I like fishing, you know, big pools, but big pools near ripples, near current. Oh, excuse me, geez. Unfortunately, uh, uh, Maine has not gotten any rain, or at least this part of Maine hasn't. So, oh, look at that chipmunk. Hey, buddy. Wow, you're fat. Oh, see you later. Wow, I just, I just roasted that chipmunk. That was very rude of me. I'm sorry. Anyway. New spot, looks really shallow, but hopefully up near the dam it gets a little bit deeper. Maybe, just might be wishful thinking here, but I don't know. It was a shot, there's a chance. I don't know if the, the mini recon is the is the bait of choice here. Oh, I see a little smallmouth swimming right there. All right, so there's fish. It's just super, super skinny. Oh, almost just died there. That was close. Don't you love that? You, you step on the wrong rock and your whole life flashes before your eyes. <laughs> that's, that's the beauty of fishing these creeks. There's one. I'm on. Wow, nice. A little smallmouth. Really skinny water. Like, this is insane. This is probably smaller than a creek. Another smallmouth. What's up, Jimmy? You want scrap? You want fight? I'll fight you. I'll fight you. You might win, but I'll still fight you. Oh, and yep, he won. Oh, it smells like Duke over here. Hell yeah. Nice. It smells like brrr. Looks like it might get a little bit deeper on that side. I'm gonna hop on over. Thank God there's no venomous snakes in Maine. In Texas, when I do this kind of stuff, I gotta watch every step I make. Oh, this spot is interesting, that's for sure. Tons of little current areas it just lacks in depth that's the only problem it might just pay off here we'll see first cast i'm already on that was so quick literally first cast that was stupid oh nice new species little uh pumpkin seed i think i don't know i wish extreme philly fish was here you could tell me exactly what this is i think it's a little pumpkin seed or a red ear i don't know i think it's a pumpkin oh bye see you later Take care, Bubba. Wow, that was so quick. Like, first cast up in there. Got him. Let's try that again. Oh, it's much deeper over there. Much, much deeper. Come on, there's got to be more. There's got to be more. Oh, there's one. Oh, perch. No way. Another new species. Little yellow perch. I actually have not caught one all month. That's kind of cool. Little yellow perch. Oh, species number three. Yellow perch. See ya. I'm trying to get right in that little slot there. Close. Oh, there we go. Smallmouth. Smally. Three species in one pool. That's pretty cool. A little bit of everything. Relax. I'm going to unhook you. Oh my gosh. Nice. Oh my god, this just ate the piss. This 
looked really sick. I'm on the back side of that waterfall now. This is just pretty much a lake almost. Super deep over here. Maybe that's what they're living in today. I don't know. We haven't had a whole lot of rain, so I'd assume that any sort of pool that's there, the fish have, have been stagnant since ice out, but I could be wrong. I don't know. I almost laughed, but I was like, you know what? No. I'm going to give it a fair play. Cool. Maybe second cast, a little more generous. There's one. Oh, oh. There we go. That's a decent one. Oh, yeah, that's much better. That is the size we're after right there. Good smallmouth. Good smallie. <laughs> yes! Made it happen. That is much bigger than anything we've caught all day. Just had to slow it down a little bit. Fish in bigger, deeper pools. Oh, they're so pretty. They are so pretty. Come here, Bubba. Come here. Oh, God. You just jumped right up on land. That was wicked. Gotcha. Nice. There we go. There's a good one. Probably about a pound. Much better than what we were catching in that small creek back there. Wow. Such a pretty fish. Sending you back. It's the nicest one of the day right there. Oh, thank you. You just made my whole week. See you, guy. I think we might have found a spot with some bigger fish. Finally, we just had to find bigger water. Generally speaking, it's bigger, slower moving current. Current, but slower moving current this is the ticket. I can just tell as soon as that guy ate, it was a good one. Nice, bro. This is all I'm doing. I'm using a little Ned head, like an eighth ounce. I'm cutting a piece off of my junior Kraken and Craw and I'm just sliding it on there. Normally I would just use a, a rattle and nud, but I forgot all of them at home, which was kind of a rookie mistake. But this works just as good. It resembles the same thing. The smallest in these creeks, they eat uh, fall fish, like little baby fall fish, minnows, insects, and then also mostly craws. And of course, this is exactly what that imitates. Same with the nud rig. Let's get a bigger one. I'll take that. Second cast. After that one. Wow, it is so deep down there. It's like probably 10 foot. Oh, there's one. Oh, that's a good fish. Decent one. About the same size as the last. Ate real close to the bank. Oh, he's a little smaller. A little bit smaller. He bit like a big one, though. <laughs> Listen to him scream. They're so angry in here. Oh, there you go, Bubba. Good one. Probably the second biggest of the day. Nice and fat. See you, bro. Very snappy down there. There's one. Yeah, I just picked it up. Feels little. Not bad. Not bad at all. <laughs> I love how fat they are in here. These fish are definitely well fed and healthy. Like that's a perfect fish. Absolute perfect small one. Let's see you bud. Get back down there. Get back down here. Alright. That's all she wrote. Let's head back to camp. We fished four different spots today. Pretty much all of them were successful. And then we caught one that was like, you know, close to two pounds maybe. Yeah, probably not. I'm, I'm wishful thinking that. He was probably about a pound and a quarter. He was small but mighty. You're so mean. What are you doing, man? What are you doing, girl? You're so mean. Ooh, scary beans. Ooh, go get it. Go get it. Go get it, beans. Beat them up. <laughs> the squeak is broken in there, girl. Yeah, she, ow, she, she just bit the hell out of my hand, girl. <laughs> she says, I'm sorry. Well, wieners, that is going to conclude today's creek fishing mission. I seriously hope you enjoyed today's episode. I know it wasn't an absolute banger, but it was so much fun to get out of the cabin and uh, get away from the computer screen and, and just kind of take a break from editing and explore what Maine has to offer. I seriously enjoy this. I, I'm sure some of you guys, maybe not all of you, but some of you guys think that the only reason why I post videos is is to, is to generate some sort of revenue so I can make money. But the real reason why I, I create these short little videos and why I go out there and wait around in creeks by myself and try to chase after micro small is because I genuinely enjoy it. And I genuinely enjoy the reaction that I get from doing this. The coolest thing ever is when I post a video and then I see a comment or see something on Instagram where someone's like, hey, I tried what you tried, I did what you did, and I had success, and it brought me happiness. I'm not trying to get sentimental. I'm actually being completely honest. This is something that I, I needed to do, get out there and chase after some Creek Smallmouth. It was such a, a simple little endeavor. It wasn't the most extreme video I've ever filmed, but it felt good to get out there and, and really 
reach my roots again and do something that uh, I grew up doing. I've been doing this for, oh my God, I think we're on 11 years now. So it was, it was very special for me to go out there and revisit something that used to bring me happiness that still brings me happiness. I know it's so hard to sound genuine on YouTube in front of a camera to people that I've not met before, but I just want to convey that to you guys that, um, yeah, this was good for me. I, I really needed this and I hope you guys enjoyed the video as well. Anyway, I'm peacing out, signing out. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Get out there exploring some creeks and some ponds and some rivers for yourself and you might just catch a micro smallmouth. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. As always, folks, Keep fishing, never stop.